Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today, I'm going to be talking about what women feel about their kids growing up. So many of you are in your, you know, um, around my age, right? Now I'm in my early 40s, so a lot of you are the same age, and I've seen that that's the most common group that listens is 35 to 44. Of course, there's other groups as well, but that's the biggest uh, percent. And so this will be applicable for many of you listening because men frequently don't understand how difficult a time this can be and how it makes the woman reimagine her whole identity and it leads to basically an identity crisis. So we will talk about that right as soon as I tell you to subscribe. My most recent subscriber episode was, I think, the honeymoon bait and switch. Let's check that uh yeah honeymoon stage and why there's no bait and switch and there's many many others including oral sex on women always got to get that one in there and just loads of others and it's really quite a lot of listening for $8.99 a month but if that is too expensive there's a cheaper option of joining my Facebook group for $4.99 a month and that has loads and loads of interesting threads about relationships intimacy people share about their individual marriages There's divorced people in there, there's single people, there's married people. I mean, there's just a range of people that have, what they have in common is that they enjoy discussing issues on a deeper level and they are not the trolls that can sometimes be on the main page Uh, because people don't pay to troll usually. All right, anyway, so what are the range of emotions that women feel about the kids growing up? And this can mean anything from Uh, going off to kindergarten to going off to college, you know, any or going through puberty, uh, your daughter having getting her period, your son growing taller than you are, whatever it is that is uh, means growing up to you. And it could, of course, be many, many things as it is a constant process of, of growth that, you know, is forever after they're out of the house as well. And they get married or or they, you know, have a serious girlfriend, they go to college, all of these things you know, are major in terms of a person thinking about their own self at that age, how they have helped or not helped their child get to this point. So what are the major feelings? Well, the first one is sadness because many women are raised to think, and this isn't just sociological. From my perspective, this is biological. You know, you're very close. It's both. Everything is both. But you, um, you know, you grow your children in your body and then you nurse them or, or not, you know, whatever you feed them, you cuddle with them and you, you take care of all of their little needs and you're so interested in them. When kids are little, they're all potential, you know, and, and people really miss this and sometimes they can't articulate it. And what I've realized it is, is as kids get older, they have less and less potential. At first they could have been anything. They could have been, you know, the, the, your like your little soulmate in a way, you know, and not, not in a creepy way, but like a child. Uh, And for some, it is a creepy way. Like for some people, they had a terrible relationship with their own parents and they put way too much on their relationship with their kid. But for many, it's like this child could be like the child that is just like you, you know, uh, but even better because you're going to give them the opportunities that you didn't have. Or the child will be the one who finally, um, you know, cures cancer or is the next president or something like that. You have no idea, right? It could, this child could be the child that is, uh, you know, all of your deepest hopes and fantasies about what having a child would be like. So as a child gets older, they close on more and more variables. More things become apparent in their choices and their preferences and their personality traits. They're not going to be everything, you know? They're going to be one thing. And if you like this one thing, that's great. If you don't, then that's hard. And that starts to happen more as the kid gets to be a teenager. So a big thing that makes women unhappy is when the child is... um you know, disrespectful during the teenage years and rolls their eyes and acts, you know, like they don't care about you because this is a repudiation of everything that the woman really tried to instill in the child, which is I love you, I care about you, I'm here for you, and then the child doesn't even want any of that. That can be very, very difficult, you know, and also the child develops in ways that the mother doesn't really like much of the time. You know, maybe they're not doing well at school or maybe they're kind of an asshole. You know, maybe they're a mean sibling 
And maybe this triggers things in the mother, you know? Uh, maybe she had a mean sibling and now her oldest is acting like a mean sibling, etc. So these things can be very triggered. The more of your identity you put into something, then the more you're going to be upset when it doesn't go well. So particularly stay-at-home moms, you know, of course, every mom working stay-at-home, all moms are committed to their kids. But particularly if you're a stay-at-home mom and you are driving your kids to all these things and that your entire life is around being the best parent that you can be because that is it, like that is your role, then when the children are are not don't behave in ways that you like, then that's very difficult. And when there's this death of potential, so you thought you would have the kid who was a good teenager and was nice and was respectful and turns out that they're not, you know, and they crashed their car and they, you know, drove drunk or they did all of these things. This can be is horrible for any parent, but the more that your entire identity is based on being a parent, then the more, the worse it hits you, right? If like the only thing that was in my life was, let's say, seeing clients as a psychologist, that was all I did is I got up and I saw clients and I went home, then if something bad happened with one of my clients, and I, then that would be a, that would kill me, right? You know, that would be so terrible because that's all that I have in my life. And so it can be like that. It can feel like that when you've focused a lot on your kids and you don't have other um, outlets, then then that's why sometimes, as I've written posts about, sometimes stay-at-home moms can get depressed, you know, because they have mostly the kids to focus on. And if things don't go well with the kids, then they feel really bad, worse than if they had other things going on too, because it's a larger piece of the pie, right? It is the whole pie of their identity. Also, and I've discussed this before, um, women start to feel very, you know, personally upset that they are getting older, that the, if, if your daughter is getting her period, it's unlikely that you're going to have yours for a lot more years, you know? I mean, you're at least halfway through having it. And so, you know, your own fertility and, and youth is waning very obviously because your children are coming up and getting older and they're turning into you know, people that have their own little crushes and their own, as they get older, you know, still their own relationships and sexual identities and so forth. And that really hammers home that you feel that you're getting quite a bit older. I've discussed how women's bodies and brains change in their 40s. That's the title of a podcast I have. I've discussed perimenopause. And, you know, um, men can feel uh, energetic for a lot longer than women can biologically. And this is amplified w when the child is growing and they're doing their sports and they're like super energetic and they're staying up super late, then it can make it pretty obvious to the mom whose energy is waning quite a bit that she is not as young as she used to be, not even remotely. And so that can be upsetting as well in as much as it's upsetting to anybody to kind of reckon with their own mortality and that they're midway through their life or more. And, you know, they did, did they really accomplish everything that they wanted to accomplish? And that that's another thing to think about too, is that often women took off and scaled back their career when their children were young. Now, if their children are older and they're, they don't seem to be very appreciative <laughs> or grateful for that, as many people struggle with, as your children hit more, more difficult years, then you start to wonder what it was for. You know, you have those memories of doing those nice little things with your little kids, but there had also been a fantasy that they would appreciate it and, and remember it. And when some when a child is in a stage of life where they're trying very much to individuate and gain their independence, which is totally developmentally appropriate, but they feel like they don't even remember the mother who took them to, you know, library class and swimming and all these little activities. So if that is what you put your career on a back burner for, then many women can feel kind of like they made a stupid decision. And it's taboo to say that because we're supposed to put our kids first in every way. But I'll tell you from working with many women over, you know, 14 years, or however long I've been in practice, um, let's see, yeah, 14 years in private practice, then you know, it, it it can be hard. <laughs> you know, you're, you have a lot of resentment. You're like basically 
like, fuck you, kids, you know, like, I basically gave you my whole life, like, Charlotte and Charlotte's Web, the spider who dies when she has kids, that's an analogy that many people have made, you know, about having kids, what it does to your body and what it does to your life, you know, you, there's really kind of no coming back from that for a lot of people. So if the kids are now independent and out of the house and maybe they don't call very much or they're teenagers and they don't even text you back, it can be a lot of resentment, honestly. Like, why did I ever stop focusing on myself if, if it was only going to go like this? And even if the children are lovely and they are just the most wonderful, engaged and empathic teenagers, they're still going to have their own lives. And you start to realize that it was just a small amount of time that you were ever going to have had them as little. And now there's like this whole second half of your life where they're not going to be around, you know, and they're not going to be around as much, certainly, and they may not be around really at all. And you go to college, they may live in a different city, like you may be seeing them on holidays and stuff. And so that is is a big change for a lot of women um, compared to what they themselves experienced because generationally things have changed and children are no longer thought to have to remain close to their parents out of any sort of obligation or duty. So it's kind of tough for people that I work with who they still visit their mother or, you know, every week or something, or they still uh, go to their mother-in-law every Sunday for dinner, but then nobody's going to be doing that for them. And so they they always kind of thought that they would eventually get their child to, you know, not out of any nefarious intent, but that their child would eventually be giving them the same sort of um, visiting or the same sort of respect or whatever it is that they felt that they had to give to their own mother or mother-in-law, and then this does not happen. So it kind of changes their whole idea about who they are in the world and what the second half of their life is going to look like. So now, you know, your wife is faced with kind of this whole yawning chasm of the second half of her life when the the most recent years were just completely focused on the children, even if she was working, you know, and as I have discussed, this is kind of a downside of our child-centered society is that it doesn't make sense anymore. Like if you're super child-centered, but then your kids stay around forever, kind of in the same neighborhood, and you definitely get to hang out with your grandchildren who are being had very young, et cetera, and then you can always kind of stay child-centered as so many women did in previous generations, Mm -hmm. then that's one thing. But it's not like that anymore, you know? And so you have this child-centered like two decades. And then after that, it's like the kids just, they do whatever they want. And some of them have kids and some of them don't. And some of them live in the same country as you and some of them don't. And so it's kind of like then what? And for many women, they have to think up an entire different, you know, path. And they have to shoehorn in a lot of things, you know, like uh, socializing that they may not even really want to do at first, especially if they're not extroverted, if they're more introverted, then they were pretty much focused on the kids and they didn't have this huge friend network. And now they kind of don't have the kids. So now what are they going to do? So there are all of these sorts of things that men who are generally more focused on career and generally have more hobbies, you know, in general, women don't have hobbies that much. If they do, then it's double dipping, like cooking, which also feeds the family, or uh, walking, which is also exercise, or, um, you know, I can't really think of any others, quite honestly. Uh, Shit, what the fuck do I mean? Women don't really... (laughs) I don't know any women who, like, really collect anything. I certainly don't know women that do, like, any sort of hunting or fishing or anything like that. Uh, Generally, the women's hobbies after they have kids are the kids. And and exercise if they want to, or cooking, or reading, which is frequently something about the kids too. So you know, it's it, it, the what what I hope to give you from this is a different window into why your wife is is not uh, wholly excited as you are about what retirement is going to look like and all the travel and all the hanging out because everything was focused on the children and now she has to completely redefine herself whether she was working or not. If she was working, then it's easier. You could throw yourself more into your career and gain a lot of fulfillment from that. If you weren't and you're not a super big extrovert, then it's like kind of what do you really do? Um, And a lot of people are reckoning with this. Now, for some women, it wouldn't be a full episode without saying for some women it's a relief as the kids get older because they never felt 
uh, super comfortable in the role of mother and they had the kids, they loved the kids, but they weren't ever really kid people and they can't wait to get back to their own life. And this is um, something that they've been looking forward to and travel and hanging out with friends and all of these things. Now, one thing that I do not frequently see, and I discuss this in other podcasts, is a woman who just can't wait to hang out with her husband more. You know, I mean, I don't see that ever, like (laughs) like in any kind of life, like the way that men talk about it. Because I think that men, I know that men think that maybe now if all these years she was saying there was no intimate life because the kids were in the house, then now somehow a post-menopausal age, their woman's going to be having sex again. I mean, it doesn't make any sense when you think about it, but a lot of men do think this because people don't really talk to each other, which is what I try to help people with, both in my therapy sessions and on this podcast. But um, a lot of guys have thought that then, like, their their intimate life will rejuvenate. And I don't know one woman that thinks that, you know, because women feel themselves getting older and more tired and their sex drive dropping, et cetera, et cetera. And n- nobody really had the role model of, like, a grandmother who was, like, DTF all the time, you know? I mean, for real. Like, like I always, like, think about this when, like, men are coming in at age 60-something and they're, like, wanting to have more sex. It's like, like, do you think your grandmother was having that much sex? Like, there's just, like, a certain age after which people don't have that much sex. I mean, that's, like, a thing. And, you know, yeah, sure, like, maybe once a week. That would be cool, you know? But it, to think that the kids are going to be out of the house and then you're going to be swinging from the chandeliers and that's when the sex dungeon is going to happen with your postmenopausal wife. I, I mean, no, you know, that that isn't that that doesn't happen except in people that were already super sexual. So there's people that are in the lifestyle community, swingers, et cetera, you know, and those people, sure, they're still doing things like that, you know, and going to parties and all this sort of thing. But to think that somebody who was never very sexual is going to start now is just doesn't make any sense. It's like saying my husband who could never really hold down a job when he was in his 20s, 30s, or 40s, now it's his 60s, he's going to be a CEO. He's not going to be a CEO of shit, you know? So he's probably just gonna get laid off one last time and sit around. So anyway, expecting somebody to have a whole different personality after the kids leave the house is really not a winning strategy, as you could imagine from how I'm saying it. All right, well, I hope that you guys got something out of this podcast, and I hope that it promotes some sort of uh, discussion. You do not have to send the podcast if people don't like to hear it. You can use your own words to summarize it and bring it up with your spouse. And if you don't know how to do that, then uh, couples therapy is always wonderful uh, as a way for both people to kind of be coached through how to express what is on their mind that they may not previously have known how to communicate. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.